Hi guys, this is Paul, and this is my demonstration on making cold cast parts from 3D prints. Cold casting is the process of mixing metal powders with clear resins. These pieces were made using an iron powder. I love the qualities that you can achieve with iron powder, such as the brilliant shine, the rust, and also these parts are magnetic. Here's the model we'll be using for this demonstration. I made this in ZBrush and we're looking at it here in Keyshot. I'll also provide a link so that you can download this model for free and try it yourself. Here's our model in Substance Painter. I've brought it in here and worked up a bit of a rust texture so we can preview what things might look like in our final part. I'll be printing this model on the FSL 3D Pegasus Touch. The Pegasus Touch is an SLA resin based printer. This model will also be a pretty easy print for FDM printers. Just having one last look at the model here in Retina Create, which is the native print software for the Pegasus Touch printer. Here I'm using the shell function just to hollow out the model so I can save on resin and get it to print a little bit faster. And here's the print, just finishing on the printer. And here's our completed print. This is more or less straight off the printer. It's had a bath in alcohol and the supports have been removed. We can now begin making the mold. This cut will do the job nicely. I'm just gonna cut around the bottom here and place it over the print. Gluing down the bottom of the cup here so our silicone won't leak. We also need to glue down the bottom of our print so it stays in place when we pull the silicone over the top. For this mold I'm using Pinky Cell. It's a dish and cure and sets in about 20 minutes. Pinky Cell uses a 1 to 1 ratio of parts A and B. So I'm just eyeballing the amounts here, making sure I've got an equal level in both cups. Once your silicone is thoroughly mixed, pour it evenly and slowly over the part. A controlled even pour will reduce the chances of air bubbles. The silicone I've used sets in about 20 minutes, but all silicones are different, so depending on what you're using, you may have to wait longer. Here's a few other things we'll need for our cast. We have a mold release, we have some cups, iron powder and our clear resin. When using and mixing resins, make sure you always wear gloves, that you're in a well ventilated area and wear suitable eye protection. When I do my cold cast, I always use a one to one ratio of powder and resin. This makes mixing easier and means that you won't get any settling at the bottom. For cold casting larger parts, it's probably more economical to just dust the inside of the mold with the powder and not use a one to one mix like this, but for our small parts here, this is perfect. The resin I'm using here is a very easy to find polyester resin, you should be able to find it in any hardware store. For the metal powders, you may need to find a specialty store that stocks it. I get my stuff from Barnes in Sydney, and if you're in Australia, that's probably the place to get it from. So I'm just making sure I've got equal amounts of powder and resin here, so you'll see me tapping it about just to level it off, and making sure we're even. Thoroughly mix your metal powder with your resin. Scrape the sides of the cup, make sure you've got a good consistent mix. Once our powder is all mixed in, we can add the catalyst to the resin. 
make sure you don't get this anywhere near your eyes and it's also a good idea to wear a respirator. I didn't record this, but once the catalyst is mixed in, make sure you mix your resin again. Mix the catalyst all the way through, make sure you've got a good consistent mix. I have here some mold release and I'm just going to spray the inside of the mold so that when the resin sets, it'll just pop out nice and easily. It's time to pour the resin. You can see here how thick it now is with the metal powder mixed in. Because of the thickness, we're more likely to get a few air bubbles, so just pour it slowly and controlled. Different resins have different cure times. You can tell by how tacky the cast is as to whether it's ready or not to come out of the mould. This one seemed good to go after about 6 hours. And here's the final cast. A few small air bubbles, but not too bad. The silicone mould has done a great job of capturing all the detail from the print. When you first demould your part, it may be a little bit dull. To bring out the metallic qualities, we need to burnish it. Here I'm just using steel wool. Thanks to the iron powder we've used, if we left this part outside, it would actually rust of its own accord, but that might take a while. So to speed things up, I'm going to use this rusty solution. There's no special technique for this bit, you just splash it on and watch it work. Already you can see the rust starting to take effect. In a few hours, you'll see a drastic change. This is already looking pretty cool. If we just let this dry, we'd have a great looking rusty piece, but I'm going to burnish it one more time so that the rust just stays in the details. Another technique for burnishing is to use the back of a spoon. Use a bit of pressure and just rub it over the surface of the cast. Pretty convincing looking metal part right here with some great reflections and highlights. And that's it, here's our final cold cast rusty robot head. Thanks for watching, I hope this was interesting and I hope you have fun making your own cold cast parts.